Well, infertility is getting an expanded definition, and that means it's more likely that LGBTQ plus and single people will have able will be able to have insurance that subsidizes care if they're looking to have a child. The formal definition from the American Society for Reproductive Medicine now includes quote, the inability to get pregnant because of medical, sexual, and reproductive history, as well as age, physical findings, and diagnostic testing, or needing medical intervention to achieve pregnancy. That includes donor eggs or sperm. For more on this, we're joined by Dr. Barbara Warren. She's a senior director for LGBTQ programs and policies in the Mount Sinai Health System Office for Diversity and Inclusion. Um, so, Thanks for joining us today. This is a fascinating new development. Why is changing the definition so important from a medical care accessibility standpoint and what caused this change to happen? Well, as you know, uh, there are many, many more LGBT couples and uh, families who want to have families. And um, because previously um, you had to have a medical condition that was really based on um, a heterosexual reproductive ability in order to get insurance coverage for this uh, or for your employer to cover it with their insurance plans. Uh, it was inaccessible to many LGBT people who didn't have a medical condition, um, but because they were in same-sex relationships were unable to conceive without uh, reproductive uh, assisted reproductive technologies. So now people, and it was very, very expensive, as you pointed out. So now people will be able to use their insurance uh, to uh, achieve fertility and be able to have the families that so many LGBTQ plus uh, couples would like to have. Um, there are some states, as you may be aware, that have already created mandates. New York, where I am, is one of them, uh, to include um, uh, same-sex couples and transgender couples. Uh, but there are still many, many states which do not. The recent change of the definition to include assisted reproduction for uh, LGBT couples by the American Society for Reproductive Medicine will be hugely influential in um, allowing people to access this care in places where it's still not accessible. Ah, I mean, fertility treatments are incredibly expensive. Um, are we talking about an impact to fertility benefits or all health care? Well, what we know Insurance. from, for example, in New York State, where I am, um, when this has been a mandate since 2021 um, for commercial insurers who operate in New York State to, to not deny coverage uh, to LGBT couples, um, we have not seen uh, dramatic increases in the cost. Um, uh, there are, although there are many people who would want to access this through their insurance coverage, it hasn't dramatically increased costs. And um, really the benefit of allowing folks to access reproductive technologies, and this also includes single people who want to have a family, who want to have children, um, far outweigh um, uh, any costs that we've seen so far. So for people who are interested in, in starting a family who are either part of the LGBTQ plus community or are single uh, and are curious about whether or not they are, are included within this, what kind of advice do you have? What should they do um, to, to access benefits and, and be impacted by this change? Well, there are a number of states and there are, you can go online and you can find out if your state has already created the mandates. For example, New York, Connecticut, Illinois, Massachusetts all mandate that commercial insurers must cover this and cannot discriminate against same-sex couples or transgender couples. If you are in a state um, that does not have this mandate, um, then you might want to get together with your uh, LGBT organization in that state to start an advocacy campaign. The new definition from um, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine will be influential uh, as part of this advocacy effort. And I think we're going to see more advocacy for this around the country uh, to ensure that um, uh, commercial insurers and employers, uh, including self-insured employers, um, will be willing to cover this. Thank you so much, Dr. Barbara Warren.